Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about jetting your carburetor. So we're gonna show you some tips and some tricks on how to do it on the bike, uh, do it quickly, and kind of understand what you're, why you're doing it and, uh, and what changes you're making to your fuel air mixture. So stick around and uh, let's get right into it. So the reason for today's jetting project is we're going on a ride. And we're going on, we're going on a ride in a place that's, we're gonna ride in January, and it's gonna be colder, and we're gonna be at a lower altitude than what I've been riding in the past, you know, five or six months. So um, jetting is something that you have to kind of get used to with two-stroke bikes. Until we get EFI on two strokes, which will probably happen, I imagine, we gotta learn how to jet them. And uh, it's not hard, so we'll go through the, some of the basics today. This bike was jetted for, you know, 7,500 feet to 10,000 feet, and maybe, you know, 80, 90 degree heat for a lot of that. Uh, and now we're gonna be riding at about, you know, 3,000, 3,500 feet, and it's gonna be colder. So we need to enrich in our mixture to make up for that denser air in order to make the bike run, the bike run right. We don't want it to run too hot with too little fuel and be too lean, so we're going to, uh, we're gonna jet this thing. So sit back and let's, let's see how easy this is because it isn't hard. And once we get there, if we find that the bike is running too rich and, it, and we want to lean it out, that's okay. It's only gonna take a couple of minutes to do that once we figure out that that's something that we wanna do. So let's check it out. Let's take a look at the tools that we're gonna need in order to do this. We're gonna need a pair of pliers to pull our fuel hose off. We're going to need an eight millimeter, I mean, sorry, a six millimeter socket. I, I love to use, you know, the socket drivers here. Um, we're gonna use that to pull our chain guard off and we're also going to use this to pull our actual jets out. So, oh, you're gonna need an eight millimeter too in order to pull the chain guard off. So eight millimeter, six millimeter, um, we're going to use a three millimeter Allen key and a 14 millimeter end wrench. You also could use a 13 millimeter, 13 millimeter end wrench to pull your chain guide off. So literally you're only going to need just some basic, basic tools to do this. And you can do this all on the trail. All these tools are easy to have in your kit. So if you need to do it out at camp or whatever, you should be able to do this fairly easily. You're going to change your needles from this side as we turn the carburetor to us on this side. And you'll change your jets from this side as you turn the carburetor towards towards you here. So we'll show you how that's done. A lot of people, a lot of people get confused about what they need to remove when they're doing their doing jetting. The only thing that I remove is this is this chain guard. So you're going to be an eight millimeter bolt here, and then I I forget I forget the size of bolt that it is on the back side here. It's probably like a thirteen or something. This is something that you'll definitely need to remove in order to do the, uh, the jetting the way I'm about to show you. Because you're going to want to be able to twist this carburetor towards you and you can't quite get it far enough if this is in the way. First things first, turn off the fuel and then we are going to take this fuel line off with the pliers. Now we're gonna take our six millimeter or our flat blade screwdriver, and we're going to loosen these hose clamps. That's gonna allow our carburetor to rotate towards us. Now as you pull this over, just be mindful and be careful of your throttle cable, which is up on the top of the carburetor. Make sure that you're not binding it. So be real careful as you pull this, as you pull this around, making sure that you don't break anything or bend anything that you don't want to. Also be mindful that this is our float bowl where we've got a bunch of gas in here. Even though the gas is not hooked up anymore, we've got a bunch of gas down in this float bowl. And as soon as I, as soon as I uh, remove this float bowl drain plug, a whole bunch of gas is gonna come out. This drain plug is a 14 millimeter. So I'm just gonna get an end wrench on that and let this gas out and this is how we're going to access our uh, here comes the gas this is how we're going to access our jets our main jet and our idle jet is here in the float bowl and this is just an easy way to to change these things without pulling um without having to pull your carburetor all the way out so now it's going to be kind of hard to see uh, with this camera angle but we have access straight up here into these jets. In this particular application, I'm removing a 158 jet with my six millimeter 
and I'll be putting them back in in 162. Okay, 162 in. Now we're just going to replace our float bowl drain plug here. And what you, you, you can do this in five minutes or less. You know, don't over tighten. And uh, she's on, ready to be tilted, you know, tilt the carburetor back, tighten your bolts, put your, uh, put your fuel hose back on, and you'd be done. Change the, cha we changed the jet, that easy. Now with the carburetor tilted the exact same way we had before, which was, you know, rotated around so that we could get access to that float bowl, we have the carburetor in the exact position we want to be able to uh, change out our needles. This one's a little bit trickier to film, but we'll see if we can see what we can do with this. So for changing the needle, we're going to remove these two, I don't know how well you can see it, but these two Allen screws, Allen bolts. Uh, on my carburetor, this is a three millimeter. The other side here. Now with those two bolts out, we can pull the, the slide right up out of the top of the carburetor. So hopefully you can see this. Just pull this thing out. Careful not to kink your throttle cable. And voila. Okay, so to get this apart, we've got this spring assembly that's kind of that's controlling your throttle. I can pull this up, pay, pay, pay close attention to what we're doing here. I'm going to pull this up, grab the cable, and push down in. There's a way to unhook this. It's easier for me to do with my right hand. And I was able to pull that, pull this cable off. There's a little hook thing here, a little uh, nub thing that goes down inside of this throttle slide and hooks on that bolt. Anyway, you can pull that apart. Don't lose, be careful not to lose that thing and let this go flying. Uh, but basically, now our slide is apart and we can take out our, this, uh, this bolt and change our needle. So, not too difficult. Just unscrew that. Here's our keeper. Bolt thing, I don't know what you call it. And we can slide the needle right out. In today's project, I'm using a little bit richer needle and I'm gonna use a little bit richer needle position. So this is the clip. And the clip decides how far down, because, because you know, how far up or down this needle will actually, you know, be when it's in the slide here. So as you, as you have your needle, your needle clip higher, like say in the first position, it will, it will allow that needle to be, go down further in the slide, which will put it further down into your needle. And as you can see how these things are tapered, that's going to lean in the mixture. It won't let as much fuel come through. So in this case, I was on the second needle position with that other needle. I'm using a richer needle and I'm going to drop down one needle position, which in essence keeps the needle higher. See that? If, if I drop the needle down, it keeps the needle higher in the slide, which will basically mean that it's pulling out of that, um, out of that jet sooner. Because as this is all, is, is all attached, as you pull the throttle, as you twist the throttle, what's happening is you're pulling the slide up, pulling, letting, letting that needle come further up out of the jet that's down at the bottom. This, this needle is going to be sticking right down into the jet in the bottom of the carburetor that we did on the other side. So basically to sum up, all I'm doing here is I'm using a richer needle and I'm going to enrich in that needle even more by using the third needle position. So the higher the needle position, the higher the number in this case, the, uh, the richer you're going to make that. So I'm now just going to put my little um, bolt back in. I don't know what you call it, nut, lock, yeah, who knows what the what the actual name of that is. Just make sure that you're careful with this stuff because you're dealing with aluminum. It would be very easy to cross thread it and strip it out. So 
That doesn't need to be in super tight, just needs to be in a little snug. Now, taking it apart is one thing, installing it is another. <clears throat> so let's talk about how we're gonna do that effectively. We've got to get this. The first thing we're gonna do is take this little plastic keeper. I don't know what you, what it's called, but it, it does have a little, a little nub or little nipple in here that has to line up and drop down on top of the, uh, on top of the, the slide or the, there's a lot of terms here I don't know. It's gonna be on top of the needle holder, the needle nut, the needle screw, the thing that's holding that needle down. So what I'll, what I'll do is I'll first put this on my cable, okay? Then I'm going to drop my cable down inside and catch it and get it on its little hook on this nut. So I'll put it down in there and, and get it secure. Now I'm gonna drop that little uh, plastic piece down inside and make sure make sure to look down in here and see that it's fallen all the way down and it's in the correct spot. That hole, that's there to keep everything together. Now, the tricky part, and this isn't tricky now because of what we've already done, but how do we now get this spring on here? Well, here's, here's a fun little trick. I can just twist this spring on, just start it, and then I can literally just twist it on. And it will feed itself right onto this thing and it's so much easier. Now, there's a lot of different guys, there, there's different ways that you can do this. Um, and if you get good at pinching the spring together and stuff, you know, it's not, it's not bad at all. Uh, but this is, this is something that one of my buddies showed me how to do last year and I have really loved that method because now it's done. It's on all the way. Springs in, keepers all the way down in the bottom everything's ready to then be shoved back into the carburetor. So let me uh, get a shot of that. Okay, it's kind of hard to see, um, but we are going to just carefully feed our throttle slide back down into our carburetor. And make, just be real careful with that. As you, as you drop that in, make sure nothing is binding and you're going to get that to fit right back where she was before, right there. Now, I like to straighten my carburetor back out and make sure, you know, that everything, that nothing is binding here on anything else. And then I'm just gonna run the slide up and down a few times, grab the throttle and uh, make sure that everything works properly and it's not sticking. That seems to be working fine. Last step, making sure everything still looks fine and tightening down the hose clamps on the carburetor. Make sure not to over tighten so you don't crack those boots. And done. That's it.